What makes a good music composition? Well, I'm going to attempt to answer this question by analyzing this sonata composed by Henry from Young Composers. So when I listened to this sonata for the first time, it really caught my attention and it got me wondering why. So I'm going to thoroughly analyze Henry's piano piece for you and discuss what elements make this composition so well written. And does having knowledge of music theory help with this process? Hooking in a listener is probably the most important step. So if you take too long in getting to the point of your composition, you risk losing people's attention right away. There are exceptions, of course, and having a great intro can be a wonderful hook, such as this intro to Tchaikovsky's Fourth Symphony. So the intro in this symphony takes a good minute and a half to get to the point. However, this anticipation is met with a melody that is expertly crafted, and it draws the listener in even more. So if you had a long intro followed by some uninteresting development, you already lost your audience. Now getting back to Henry, the first thing that you'll notice in this introduction is that Henry immediately starts off with the melody of this sonata, contrary to Tchaikovsky's intro. And this melody is heavily driven by rhythm. So I'll say that if you want to compose in this Beethoven-like style, then having a good understanding of rhythms and timings is critical. So Henry also makes important usage of rests to break up momentum. And in my opinion, this is a great way to create anticipation for the listener. However, in order to make this melody catchy, we need more than just rhythm. So aside from three notes followed by a rest and two notes, this pattern actually continues throughout the piece and in different variations. Here are some examples.
What Henry just demonstrated is a part of what makes a good melody. And this ability to create variations on a melody is a powerful technique to use in good music writing. And this actually doesn't have anything to do with music theory. Despite the intro being very strong, my favorite part of this sonata is this part right here. This is where we introduce the listener to the polyrhythm. It's a beautifully crafted section and it's actually very laser focused. So in terms of music theory, I say that music theory knowledge is absolutely critical here because if you don't understand how polyrhythm because if you don't understand how polyrhythms work, then you just won't have the knowledge to compose something like this. So let's briefly go over this strategy. In the right hand, you can see that we have a series of standard eighth note triplets. And in the left hand, we have regular 16th notes, which is all in 4-4 time. So now let's calculate the tuplet ratio so that we can compose the rhythms correctly. You can see that for every four 16th notes, we have three eighth notes. So in Music Jotter, here's how we can execute this. First, you have to make sure that you have the eighth note selected. Then all you have to do is click on the tuplet ratio dialog box, which is right here. And now focus your attention in this section, because this is where you're going to type in three eighth notes for every four sixteenth notes. So now all of your triplets will have the correct ratio and you can start composing with three notes to every four. And this is what a polyrhythm is. So if you look really closely at the spacing, you're going to notice that not all of the notes align exactly with each other, causing some really interesting musical textures. If you look carefully at this passage, you'll notice that Henry makes use of another voice in the right hand. In fact, these quarter notes in voice 2 belong to the common time of 4-4, four four, whereas these notes in the main voice are your triplets that we just discussed. So the purpose of this voicing is going to be to show emphasis of these higher notes in this passage. So while the main voice has a duration of eighth note triplets, the performer has to ensure that the fifth finger holds this note in voice two while these three triplets are played. So here's a quick example for you. As you can see, having a good musical foundation is critical when composing a work like this, because if you don't know how to utilize multiple voices to achieve this effect, then your music just won't have these details that give it more color. There's a very nice section where Henry breaks up the flow of this sonata, and I'm actually going to break up the flow of this video right now by quickly reminding you what this channel is about. Peter, cue the Christmas music. Didn't think that would actually work. Most of you watching this premiere know that Music Jutter is a new and exciting music notation software that I'm actively developing. My last short, which received thousands of views, talks about how you can custom space your notes in the software. Let's watch that together real quick. Not only can you custom space notes in the main voice like this, but each voice gets its own custom spacing rules, and you can make minor adjustments like this. And this is what I mean by Music Jotter offering a fluid feel. 
This easy to use software also has other powerful features such as meterless music, custom beaming, polymeters, and realistic playback which I'll demo at the end of this video. So if you're interested in supporting this technology, you can join my Buy Me A Coffee community where you can get early access to Music Daughter for just $3 a month. But after Christmas of 2023, the prices will go up by $1, so don't miss out. But did you know that Music Daughter also dedicates videos to people who participate in this community? If you would like a chance for your music to be featured in one of my videos, be sure you like this video and to subscribe to my channel to help spread the word of Music Daughter. And all information around how to participate will be linked in the description below. But in terms of breaking up the flow in a musical composition, Henry does this by introducing almost like a fugue-like progression in the body of this sonata. So in this section, he makes use of multi-voicings, polyrhythms, triplets played against quarter notes, and triplets played against other triplets. So as you can see from the notation, Henry has good knowledge of the rhythm, and this knowledge helps him express his music in an organized manner. So without this knowledge, writing a piece at this level would just be impossible to do. However, the decision to break up the momentum and to change the mood of the piece is a creative decision. And this type of creative writing comes from the mind, not the rule book. Since Henry was able to break up the piece's momentum and flow, coming back to the main theme makes this a much more enjoyable piece to listen to. And the reason for this is because our ears don't become desensitized to the tune. And when we're reintroduced to the main theme, we now recognize it without being overly exposed. In a way, the sonata is loosely in the form of ABA, and this decision to create this type of form is a creative decision, and it has nothing to do with music theory. As a quick aside, I want to do a brief introduction on Beethoven's Sonata Pathétique. So the reason why I'm bringing Beethoven into this video is because he too also implemented a powerful introduction to this sonata. And he brings back the intro as a variation, but this time in a different key. So I want you to take a listen to these examples because these examples will show you how important the creative process is when writing music. And this creative process goes well beyond music theory.
Now there's one problem with Henry's recording, and that has to do with the quality of the audio file. So here's a case where we have an excellent composition followed by an excellent performance. But the audio, oh my gosh. <laughs> when you're this talented in composition and performance, you need to worry about your audio. Otherwise, you're going to lose the listener for the wrong reasons. So you can have a mediocre composition, but if your recording is excellent, it will win over the better composition with the subpar audio. So that's why it's such a shame that this performance wasn't properly recorded. However, all is not lost because I took the liberty to score some of Henry's music in Music Daughter. And I did this because after scoring a section of this sonata, I wanted to run the MIDI through Music Daughter's realistic playback prototype. So this should give you an idea of how Music Daughter's playback can work to help bring life to your music. So what you're gonna hear next is the MIDI rendering of this sonata, immediately followed by a little bit of Henry's performance. So is music theory necessary to write a good music composition? After doing an analysis of this sonata on camera for you, I have to say yes, at least if you want to write music in this style. And the reason is because if you want to write something interesting and exciting, having an understanding of rhythms, harmony, tuplets, and polyrhythms is pretty much required. Also keeping your piece in key while venturing out of key every so often is pretty much standard for this style of musical writing. So good knowledge of seamless key changing is required as well. Here's an example where Henry gets adventurous with his key changing.
You can clearly hear how Henry is able to bring this piece back to root key quite seamlessly. But even though music theory scored higher in points, here's where I'm going to contradict myself. Music theory alone isn't nearly enough. Having a creative and imaginative mind also plays an important role. I may even argue that it's even more important. Because even if you have all the knowledge in the world around the technical aspects of music, if you lack this creativity, your music just won't have enough color or flavor. So my advice to you is to not get too crazy with music theory, but what's more important is that you develop your creative process. And you can expand your creative mind by listening to music composed by other composers, such as this beautiful sonata composed by Henry.